Hello everyone, welcome to Keetham's Insight Web Series. I'm Surya Madnala, Senior Trainer for Quantitative Aptitude, Keetham Vaisak, India. In this video, we'll learn about factors and multiples, which further helps us in understanding the LCM and HCF of the numbers. By the end of this video, we also understand to define the factors and multiples. We understand the application of LCM and HCF. Equally, we will be able to solve questions based on LCM and HCF. So let's see what's first with us. Okay, be be before I define what factor is, I would say factor can also be referred as divisor. Since we are preparing for NSAT examination, I would rather say, let us be more acquainted with a word called factor rather division. But either way, we can call it same. Either way is same. But in India, we follow mostly considering factor as the common word. So we use factor here to understand the questions. So what, the, what factor states? The number which divide the given number perfectly is known as the factor of that given number. So rather understanding the definition, we work with an example. So if I ask you, there is a number eight, and I just find a number which divides this number perfectly. So one is the least number which divides this number perfectly. Yes, so one is a factor of eight. I have two is a number which divides this number perfectly. I have four, I have eight. Now, do I have 16 also, which a number to divide this number perfectly? The answer is no, because 16 does not divide this number perfectly. When it divides this number, it leaves quotient as non-integer value. We're all talking about number to be divided perfectly. That does mean that the quotient should leave, the quotient should have, should be an integer value on. So all these numbers are considered to be factors of eight or else divisors of eight. And when it comes to multiple, the number which is a product of, a, of the given number with any natural number is the multiple of that given number. Let's say, take the same example eight. Now, product of this number with any natural number. Let us multiply this number with one. What is the product? We get one. Eight ones eight. Okay. Then eight is also then eight is called as multiple of eight. Oh, if I multiply with two, I get sixteen. Sixteen is the multiple of eight. If I multiply with three, I get twenty-four. Twenty-four is the multiple of eight. With 4, 32, 32 is multiple of 8, so on. If I multiply n with 8, 8 n is a multiple of 8, n being a natural number here. So if we observe here that when we discuss about multiples, we have infinite number of multiples for a given number. But when we talk about factors of 8, we have a limited number of factors, a limited number of num numbers, which is which are factors of eight. So this makes us to understand more easily what a factor and a multiple is. Now let us understand what LCM and HCF are. So rather defining these terms, I would just take an example and work on it and understand the definition for it. So I've taken an example of finding LCM of four and six here. So let us work in finding LCM for four and six and defining this term LCM by letter by letter in reverse order. So let me understand what M states here. M means multiples. So let's, let us list out the multiples for four and six. So I've listed out the multiples of four and six, four, eight, 12, 20, 24, and so on. Similarly for six, we have six, 12, 24, and 30, 36. 
Now, one thing I observe here that the number which are in red colored, so they are all common in both the set of multiples. Yes, they're common in both the set of multiples. Now, when I see the second letter from the reverse N, I have C, which refers as common multiples. So if I list out the set of common multiples, I have 12, 24, 36, so on. Now, when we understand about L, it is denoted as the least, the least among the set of the common multiples. So the least common multiple I have is 12. So LCM of four and six is 12. In the same way, we also understand what HCF is by letter by letter in reverse order. So F denotes here the factors, the factors for H and 12. I listed out the factors of H and 12. As we all know that the factors are the limited ones. 12, I've listed out the factors for 12. Again, the number which are read in color are the common which you see in both the list of factors. So when I see the common factors among these, so I have got a set of three elements, which are the common factors for both eight and 12. Common factors for both eight and 12. That does mean that one divides both eight and 12. 2 divides both 8 and 12. 4 divides both 8 and 12. I have not listed here 6 because I know that 6 does not divide 8. So I just listed out the common ones which divides both of them. When we talk about the letter H, we have representation of H as the highest common factor. The highest common factor so among the set of common factors, the highest one is a, a four. So four is the highest common factor for eight and 12. A one important reference I wanted to add here, highest common factor or the HCF can be referred as GCD, as greatest, common division. So either way you can call the same. Till now, we were working on identifying the LCM and HCF. Here we see the application of HCF and LCM. So let's work on this question. It says that to find the least number, which when divided by six and eight, six and eight leaves remainder zero in each case. So let us understand the question in parts. So I see they're talking about least number, which one divided by six and eight and leaves zero, zero as remainder. That does mean they're talking about a remainder, which is perfectly divisible by six, as well as by H, because and they're talking about not R. So the number has to be divisible by both six and H. Okay, so let us first work initially with all those numbers, which is perfectly divisible by number six. So if I talk about number six itself only, is this number divisible by six? Yes, it is divisible by six. 12 is the number which is also divisible by six. 18 is the number which is also divisible by six. 24, 30, 36, 42, and so on. So when I see these all numbers, I'm writing nothing but the multiples of six. The same way, if I start identifying all the numbers, which one divided by eight leaves zero as remainder, or you can read it as all those numbers, which is perfectly divisible by eight. 
8, 16, 24, 32, so on. All these are nothing but the multiples of h. Now, what is the question saying? Find the least number which when divided by both 6 and 8. So the number has to be divisible by both 6 and 8. Now, if I see 6 here, this number is though divisible by 6, but not by 8. So I cannot take 6. Can I take 16? No, because 16 is divisible by 8, but not by 6. So this is also not possible. So which number is possible to take? Yeah, 24. Yes, because I see 24 being in the multiples of 8 as well as in the multiples of 6. So 24 is the number which when divided by 6 and 8, it leaves remainder 0. Can we have another number as well? Yes, that's right. If you see 48, 48 comes under the list of multiples of 6 as well as it comes under the list of multiples of 8 and so on. So you have list of multiples which are in common in common to both 6 and 8. But are they asking all the list of multiples? No, they're talking about the least number. So which is the least number? 24. Yes. So the answer to the question is 24 is the number, the least number, which when divided by 6 and 8 leaves 0 as the remainder in each case. So that's pretty explanatory here that we are working on nothing but the least common multiple of 6 and 8. But what if I change the question in this way, which reads out as to identify the number when divided by 6 and 8 leaves 2 as the remainder in each case. So in this question, we talked about 0 as the remainder in each case. So we identified all the list of numbers which are perfectly divisible by 6 and 8. Now, but we don't need those numbers which are perfectly divisible by 6 and 8. We need those numbers when divided by 6 and 8, we just need to have a remainder as 2. So the question is same. The only thing is the change in the remainder. Now, the answer to this question is nothing but 24. Now you see that 24 is perfectly divisible by 6 and 8 and leaves 0 as the remainder, which is the least one. But if I want 2 as the remainder, I just add 2 to this number. That becomes 26 to be the least one, which when divided by 6 and 8, leaves 2 as the remainder. Because this leaves 0 as the remainder. And this leaves 2 as the remainder because we have added 2 to it. That's it. So the job becomes small. Now, if someone asks you saying, find the least number which when divided by 6 and 8 leaves 5 as the remainder, it's as simple as it is. Identifying the LCM of 6 and 8 and adding 5 to it. And you get your answer. That's it. So in the previous question, we understood the one way of application of LCM. In this question, the other way of understanding the application of LCM is. So what the question states here, saying that A, B, and C begin to jog around a circular stadium, the complete revolutions in 24 seconds, 48 seconds, and 36 seconds, respectively. After how much time will they meet at the starting point? So let us understand the question in breaking out in parts. So when I see the first part of the information says that A, B, C are three persons jogging around the circular stadium from one point. They start at one point. Let's suppose this is a point where they start. The complete revolution. So what is a complete revolution means? So they start from here and they come back again to this point, and that's what a complete revolution means. 
the complete revolutions in 24, 48, and 36 seconds, respectively. So, what word respectively represents here indicates that A completes A completes one revolution in 24 seconds. B completes one revolution in 48 seconds. C completes one revolution in 36 seconds. So the beauty in understanding the HCF and LCM, the questions of HCF and LCM is, you get your answer in the question itself only. If you understand, interpret the literature of the question completely clear, you will straight away land up to identifying the answer. So the question is clear. After how much time will they meet at the starting point? Now you all know that A completes one revolution in 24 seconds. So he will complete another revolution in 48 seconds. He will complete his next revolution in 72 seconds. And the next one in 96 seconds. So if you see, I'm talking about nothing but the multiples of 24. In the same way, I see B completing his one revolution in 48 seconds. So the other second revolution, his second revolution in 96 seconds. Okay. The third revolution in 48, 96, 144 seconds and so on the multiples of 48. Now C completes his one, first revolution in 36 seconds, the second one in 72 seconds, the third one in 108 seconds, and so on in 36 and second every revolution. So these are nothing but the multiples of the number given to you. But the question is all about after how much time will they, they, they're talking about all three of them meeting at the starting point. So all three of them has to meet at the starting point. Now, if I see among the listed one, let's see. In 48 seconds, when A is here, who has completed his second revolution, are they all meeting at the same point? I know that in 48 seconds, B meets A, but not A, C, because C has already covered one revolution as and passed, passed the starting point. Can, can you all see that in 72 seconds, is there any possibility that B also meeting A? No, but you see that C is meeting A, but not B but we want all three of them. So they're talking about the common multiple, common multiple of 24, 48, and 36. And they meet at the starting point after how much time? So the first time they meet, that means the least common multiple of 24, 48, and 36. So when I see the least common multiple of 24, 48, and 36, it's nothing but 144. So you have here 108, 108, and then you have, if I add 20, oh, this, if I add 24, this is 120, 144. Here you have some of 144. After this, if I add 36 to this, then this becomes 144. Yes, the 144 is a common one among the three, in, in three, and which is the least one. So the answer to the question is, in 144 seconds, all three will meet at the starting point. This is how the applications of LCM and HCF are used in the word problems. And that ends up the video. Thank you very much, everyone.